Hi grade 12, in today's video we are going to do a question that falls under a correct net profit after tax. So basically this is the question paper that was written in 2019 November. That, that was a final examination guys. So without wasting any other time guys, please let's go and check the question. Then we do the transaction that we have. Okay, so this was a question 4. So the one that we are looking for for this video is question 4.2.2, okay? Also, please make sure that after this video, you go and watch question 4.2.3, where I did a balance sheet, okay? Question 4.2.2 that we are going to do now, they said calculate the correct net profit after tax for the year ended 28 February 2019. Indicate plus for increase and minus for decrease okay you can also show a, bar, a, a bracket if it's a minus and no bracket if it's a plus it's still correct okay now let's go to the question let's go to the scenarios that we have so this is the format that we are going to use this is the one that you were given on your answer book okay so question number number c Transaction number C is the one that is more related to the question that we are doing now. Number one, they said a net profit before tax is 822,700 was calculated before correcting the following. Okay, which means that we have to say a net profit before adjustment. Okay, so this one is going to give us amount of 822,700. Okay, you just copy this one. Then we go to transaction number two or transaction blade number one. Provisional for beds must be increased by 62,000. The first step, grade 12, is to understand what is provision for bed aid. Once you understand that, it is going to be very simple for you. Okay, when we talk about a provision for bed aid, this is the money that we put aside. The reason why we put it aside is because there are some clients that we don't trust much that they are going to, to pay us. In other words, provision for bed aid is simply means that we are doubting. We, we are not yet written of these people. We are just doubting that these people are not going to Pay us. Okay. Provision for bed debt, it can be income. Sometimes it can be expense. Now let's analyze it in this way. Remember, we're talking about people that we are doubting that these people are going to pay us, which means that if they become more, they are going to stress us now that now there are more people that they are not going to pay us. But if they are becoming less, which means that that's good more money we are expecting as a what as income in other words i'm saying that once you see the word has increased means that now there are more people that we are doubting which means that it's going to be expense it's bad for us it's going to be expense but if they said provision for bed debt decrease that's good for us which means that people that we are doubting they are becoming less which means that we're gonna receive more okay just like that all right now, because in this scenario, they say the provision for bed debt must be increased by 65,000, which means that this provision for bed debt is going to be expense. Okay. Provision for bed debt. Remember, if you are, you are calculating income statement, sometimes you can find it on the expenses, sometimes on the income okay this in this case we concluded that because it has increased we have to record it as a what as an expense it's a minus or what with brackets all right now let's proceed to the next one 9800 of advertising contract apply to the next financial year okay if we are talking about advertising we are talking about expense this expense they say that is for next year in other words 
they recorded the expense that does not belong to financial statement for this year. Remember the GAP principle said that, matching concept said that we have to record income and expenses for only this year. For next year, no. Which means that this amount of 9,800 of advertisement was subtracted under expenses. Now what do we do? We have to reverse it back. Why I'm saying was subtracted? Because they said it's for next year and the next year items are not allowed under income statement. Okay, which means that our advertising it was expense and it was subtracted. Now we have to do what to reverse it. If you subtract uh, something and you want to bring it back, you have to do what to add. Okay, so that it can cancel the other one, which means that our 9,800 is going to be a positive. Okay, the reason why it's positive is because it's like we are reversing it. It was subtracted and it's not allowed to be subtracted, okay, because it's for next year. All right, simple as that. In other words, we are applying a matching concept because it's not allowed under income statement for this year. We're going to subtract it next year okay because it's for next year okay then another one i hope you are getting my point guys i'm trying to simplify as much as possible okay then number three a tenant paid a rent of 334,000 for the period of 1 march 2018 to 31 march 2019 the rent was increased by 3,000 per month from 1 january 2019 okay in this case guys uh, they told us that our financial year is ending 28 february 2019 which means that it started 1 march 2018 okay and in this case they said yes they started to pay on 1 march 2018 but they also pay one month in advance for this year because our year must end 28 february and in this case they ended on 31 March 2019, which means that they paid a 13 months instead of what? Of 12. A gap principle said that we have to record only 12 months. Now what do we do? We have to take out another one month so that we can left with 12 months. Simple as that. How are we going to take it? Let's look it, at it again. The total is 334,000, but the problem the problem that we have is that this rent has increased uh, only one January 2019 by 3,000. Okay, which means that the first step that we have to do, we have to check how many months does this rent increase by 3,000. It's January, February, and March is three months. Three multiplied by, okay, let me just write it here. 3 multiplied by this 3,000 of increase, we found that there is a 9,000 of increase from that amount, which means that what we can do is to take the total of 334,000 and we subtract 9,000, okay? Uh, 334,000 minus 9,000. Then we're going to get amount of 3 months. Uh, sorry, we're gonna get amount of 13 months before any increase. Okay, then which means that we're gonna say uh, 334 minus 9000, which is going to give us um, 325,000 divided by 13, which is going to give us amount of 25,000 okay yes this 25,000 is the rent before increase but remember the month that we are looking for is March and is March is after increase which means that we have to say 25,000 plus 3,000 so that we can get rent for one month after increase this is going to give us 28 28,000 okay 
this is one month for for March simple as that so which means that this uh, rent income rent income of 28,000 that was paid in advance it's not allowed under income statement for this year this income must be subtracted and added back next year 28,000 just like that simple as that okay now let's proceed depreciation and profit and loss of the vehicle sold must be recorded okay now we have to look at this carefully if you check if you go back and check information number one they said a fixed asset a delivery vehicle was sold on 31 october 2018 but no entry were made to record this details of vehicle okay they give us the name of the vehicle date of purchase is 1 march 2016 date of sold is 31 october 2018 during our reporting period okay and it was sold for 195,000 cash okay then depreciation rate they said is 25 percent per annum and diminishing balance method you know that when we calculate diminishing balance method we have to use a carrying value okay now let's check we have a cost price which was 400,000 depreciation 100,000 for the first year second year 2018 let's look at 2018 february because remember the closing balance for 20, 28 february 2018 is going to be opening balance for the next year that is going to start 1 march 2018 okay then which means that the opening balance the current value they are already give us the current value in this case guys we don't have to calculate the current value but the current value to calculate it is very simple because you, you just have to take cost minus depreciation is going to give you the current value and minus depreciation of 75000 300000 minus 75000 is going to give you 225000 of current value all right now we have a current value of 225000 now we have to calculate a depreciation for this year okay we are starting with depreciation depreciation i think this calculation we can store it here 225000 of current value my plus by 25% the rate but we have to count a month in this depreciation why because it has been sold during the year okay we spend with this uh, this vehicle from 1 march 2018 until they sold it on 31 october 2018 if you count that is going to give you eight months it's gonna give you eight months which means that you have to say it multiply by eight over 12 then we're gonna get our depreciation depreciation is an expense because no entry was made totally which means that we just have to go in and subtract it okay now let's calculate if you calculate this it's going to give you 37,500 37,500 simple as that but remember they also said that beside the depreciation we have to check whether we sold this vehicle by a profit or loss you know that if it's a profit profit on sales of assets fall under other income loss on sales of assets fall under expenses under what our net profit before tax okay we, let's test that let's test that okay okay we're just gonna do the calculation first and see they say that they sold this vehicle by how much? Uh, let's check on information. They said it has been sold for 195,000. Selling price, we have to compare it with what? With the current value of this vehicle. The current value is after this depreciation, which means that it's 225 minus 37,500. Okay, let's do this. 225 minus 37,500 is gonna give us 187,500. 
187,500. Now let's use our mind to apply whether it's a profit or loss. This is the money that we receive when we sold this vehicle. This is the worthy, or this is our book value, worthy of the assets that we know that our vehicle worthy 187,000, but we sold it by 185, which means that we benefited because the worthy of this is lesser than what, what we have received, which means that in this case, we receive a profit on sales of assets, just like that. Then which means that now we have to calculate and get the different uh, between these two, which is going to give us, uh, let me calculate. It's going to give us 7,500. 7,500 because it's profit and it's pos it must be positive because it's income. Okay, then now let's proceed. The last transaction, they said a further 43,000 is owed for income tax. Okay, which means that income tax, they said we have to make additional of 43,000. But this is not the only amount that we are going to include. We have to check if we have any provisional payment that we have to to add that has been estimated during the year okay if you check on number b they said that a uh, source income tax provisional tax payment is 155,000, which means that yes we have it and we have to add it then after that we're going to subtract the total that we are going to get okay a total is going to be 198 thousand okay then now this this is was the last transaction then the correct correct net profit after tax will be we are adding everything that is positive and subtracting everything that is with brackets then it's gonna give us amount of five one one five hundred five one one five hundred just like that uh, my grade 12 student so i hope you learn something and you enjoy please go into playlist and check other chapters and other related questions with this one so that you can learn more principle and a lot of different transition thank you so much for watching guys please just support us by subscribing like this video and share with friends so that they can also learn what you are learning. See you on the next one, guys. Goodbye.